Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This afternoon I'm going to be doing another movie review. This movie is a thriller from the United States, English language, released in the year 2014, directed by Jim Mickle, and this film is called Cold in July. So Cold in July is set in 1989 in Texas. You've got this loving family man who has a wife and a young son. One evening their home is broken into and he shoots the intruder dead. So he's very torn up about this. He doesn't see himself as the hero the community see him as, and he's suffering mentally. So the least he can do is go to the burial of this intruder to pay his respects, but this is where he meets the intruder's father who has recently been released from prison. So the father says things that make the main character feel very uneasy and he believes that his family's in immediate danger. So he goes back home, he's trying to protect his family but it's a lot easier said than done because the whole situation there's a lot more to it than this guy first thought. So there's a web of complications that result in a lot of danger and the whole situation is about to explode into something very interesting that I'm not going to give away so if you like the way that this film sounds please go out there and see it for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Cold in July. This is an example of suspense, and when suspense is done right, how riveting it can be. And I think that Jim Mickle really understands what it is to capture an audience from the invisible presence. And the invisible presence in this film is that brooding intensity to the atmosphere. It soaks through the screen, it captures the viewer, and it never really lets you go. And the good thing about the Cold in July, and the reason why I enjoyed it as much as I did, is because not only is the plot starting to thicken and evolve into something so much bigger, but also the characters are as well. So it goes for nearly two hours, but I thought those two hours were used very, very intelligently because you get a connection to the main character, played very well by Michael C. Hall. Now this is a guy who's very loving. He has very realistic reaction to certain events. When he kills this intruder, he's not happy about it. And this is something, like, taking a life is not so easy. So when you've got a caricature character that can take a life and not think anything else about it, you can't relate to that person. But because Michael C. Hall's character is so torn up about this, you feel a lot of guilt for him. You feel a lot of, you know, sympathy. And and I think you think to yourself, okay, well, he doesn't deserve this. And so, all right, I like this guy because he didn't like taking the life of someone who was doing something wrong. And so you get a lot, a strong sense of connection to these characters. And the beauty of the film is even the villains you get a connection to because as they start to evolve, you start to look at them in a completely different way. And so not only are you looking at the story in a completely different way, but I thought the characters really complement the plot twist that the movie has around every corner. So the movie does change directions quite rapidly on more than one occasion. So you completely lose sense of control. A lot of viewers and a lot of films, you have that control, therefore the suspense is as big as it would be in, as opposed to a film like Cold in July, where Jim Mickle is the driver. He's taking you on a ride and he's not telling you where your destination is. And so because of that, you've got no control. You feel very uneasy and you feel as though, okay, where am I going to go? Where is my safety barrier? You don't know where that safety barrier is because even the good guys in this film, you can't really trust. And so there's that sort of uncertainty to the characters. There's the uncertainty to the plot that creates that suspense and this is what is a forgotten art and I think this movie really does have a nod to films of yesteryear not only in the suspense but also the 1980s feel that this film has you've got the visuals everything from the haircuts to the to the cars it was very 80s and you've got a phenomenal soundtrack that reminded me of the soundtrack of Adam Wingard's The Guest now The Guest I thought tried a little bit too hard to be an 80s film but this is much more of a subdued sort of film is that yes it's visually very interesting but it's really relying on that suspense it's relying on the psychological aspect Aspect that the film has and this is why as I said I love this film as much as I did it does have very miniature problems but in no way does that cloud the enjoyment of this film so the acting is very good because of the fact the script allows these characters to blossom as I said each and every time you think you know where it's going it does take you off in a different direction and I felt as though the whole thing was a pressure cooker is that you've got the anticipation that things are going to explode and they do explode to a very satisfactory level so there's some pretty graphic scenes of violence and I thought the suspense was very reminiscent of Martin Scorsese's remake of Cape Fear, although you know it's not as good as Cape Fear, I thought that especially the house scene in Cape Fear, there was some very reminiscent qualities in this film as well. So as I said, Jim Mickle has taken things that have inspired him as a filmmaker and he's made it his own film and I just thought that this was very riveting, it's very, very disturbing. There are some themes in this film that I wasn't quite prepared for and that's, as I said, once again, that's another example of what this film is. It's basically a movie you're not prepared for and that's why I loved it is that, as I said, there is nothing that is typical, there is no you know conventional storytelling telling it all takes these turns and I never felt as though it was getting out of its limits of capability.
I never thought as though it was getting too ambitious. And so I, it, there's no filler in the film. So it's a very well thought out process. It's not a movie that's making it long for the sake of being long, uh, which is a criticism I have of other films. Uh, I just thought as though Jim Mickle has sat down with everybody involved in this film and he's made out a plan, he's detailed the plan and everyone's on a level playing field and therefore it just creates a, a movie that doesn't come along very often. Yes, not many times I can say that I really enjoyed an experience, that an experience really kept me on the edge of my seat from start to finish. And as I said, it's because of the unpredictability that is just swirling through the film that takes you off guard and you go on the journey with these characters. And so if this sounds like something that is your cup of tea, then I would highly recommend you check out Cold in July. The only problems I have with the film are very miniature problems is that I thought some of the plot points were forgotten. Now, I can't really go into that without spoiling it, but I thought, okay, at the end of the film it was satisfying, but parts of me in the back of my mind were thinking, well, what happened to this character? This character was kind of forgotten a little bit. And there were some other points where I thought, well, it doesn't quite make sense but overall I thought that as far as an experience is concerned it's definitely one to really look out for if you're a fan of your suspense if you're a fan of 1980s films then this is definitely one to check out you know it's complimented that the movie complements itself in many areas and therefore it just becomes an overall uh, very rewarding and satisfying film so overall for cold in July going to give this one four stars go out there and see it all right guys that's it for my review hope you enjoyed it till next time you watch movies and I'll see you later